All right, so I'm going to put this up in the chat now that I've started to record. So that link has like everything that you need that we're going to be covering tonight. It's got the um, the funeral service um, handbook. It's got the notes from tonight. Um, it's got a bunch of other good resources. So it's just a good link to grab and, and save. Um, let me get our notes in front of us. Like I said, I was a little bit behind just because grading and lost track of time. There it is, so we're turning 21, orientation, turn 21. that's not the right one. There it is. Summer 2021, funeral service orientation. Let's just let this thing load up. And most of the videos, any class that I've been doing over the past year and a half, I've been recording on Zoom and then transferring to YouTube and then making it private. Um, so it's or unlisted rather. So it's just if you have the link, you can see it with these orientations. I make them open so that you just need to go to our page and you can view them if you choose to. All right, it's waiting for it to load up. There we go. All right. So also do me a favor. I, I noticed that when I look at the participants, there's a couple of people that I don't see your name. If you could, if, if everybody could just type their name into the chat, the chat, get, the chat log gets recorded now that I've started to record. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to check off. Okay, you've been in orientation. You've been in orientation. You've been in orientation. And I can just, you know, it, it's just one less thing for me to, to, to worry about. Fantastic. Thank you guys. See so you put your names in there. Um, all right, so slideshow from beginning. All right, so we're just going to go through just basic stuff that you guys need to know for the program itself. Um, all right, so in the, the program normally, I'm going to move this so it's out of my way. Um, normally the program, um, if you're doing the full time, it takes two semesters, um, you know, and we're, we base this off of, we built it on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. So that if you are doing that, you have the Tuesdays and Thursdays off, and you also have the, um, you know, the weekends off, um, the classes are all blended or hybrid. Now we're projected to be back on campus. I think we're going to be, but my only concern in committing to that is we were supposed to have a um, graduation ceremony um, in August, like mid-August, and it was supposed to be in person, and they yanked the, the rug out from under us. They're like, nope, like like a couple days ago. They were like, yeah, we're just not going to do that now. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. So I can't commit to anything until we're actually there. I'm hoping we'll be there, but if we are, the, 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 the classes, regardless whether we're distanced or whether we're in class, the classes are, are quote unquote hybrid um, or blended, meaning that what used to be a three hour class is now an hour and a half. Um, we take half the course material, we put it online, we keep the other half that material in the classroom. Um, we cover the stuff that's online. But just very quickly, I'll go over a unit, what used to be like an hour and a half, we, I'll go through it in five minutes and just say, look at it in your own time. We have modules you look at through and, and you do the readings with them. And we've had pretty good success with this, but this allows us to cover any topics that need to be done. Um, you know, if you have questions about it or anything like that, we can discuss that in class. We've also gotten a lot more savvy over the last year and a half because of the, the whole lockdown, the pandemic and all of that stuff. And that I know like in my classes, what I used to teach for a three hour class, I'll now take that hour and a half and create a YouTube video for it and just drop that link in there. So if you want to watch the entire um, lecture that we used to have, you can do so. Um, you, we'll go through the specifics on that, but you're generally in class at, on campus on on mondays and fridays for about three hours wednesdays are a little bit longer and that tends to be 10 to 4 or 10 to 5 depending on 10 30 excuse me 10 30 to 4 or 10 30 to 5 depending on what class you're in whether you're in lab or field experience and i'll talk about that here in a second now the part-time or the evening classes these take anywhere between one and two and a half years um if you're doing classes part-time we need to take at least two classes per semester and, um, you know, because we need to graduate you in a certain amount of time, the accreditor says they, they only allow us to have you in the program for a certain amount of time. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, and the part time in the evening classes are just evening classes. Um, these are also blended or hybrid classes. 
Um, these can be completed in a year if started in the spring. And I, I know that we have a couple of students this year. They're starting off knocking off most of the prereqs in the fall and then picking up in the spring. And you can wrap by wrap up the program by doing spring, summer, and fall. So it's still very manageable. All right. So like I said before, the classes previously were distanced. They were not quote unquote online because an online class you do on your own time in that you want to do your classwork at three in the morning. You're allowed to. We, we would still meet at the normal times. And if they kick us back to this, we'll still be meeting at those normal times. It will just be like this instead of actually in class. Um, like I said before, we're projected to be back on campus, but this is always subject to change. There's a lot of talk about this Delta variant. I don't know. I'm done with the whole damn thing. I'm finished with this garbage. Um, I, I want life to get back to normal. Um, you know, uh, MC staffs are saying should be back in mid to late August. They're saying, I want to say maybe it's August, August 20th or something. They're supposed to be back on campus. Maybe the 16th, they're supposed to be back. Um, so that'd be good. We'll have people back on campus. We can start getting life back to normal. We can start getting things functioning again. Now, things that I don't know, and I confirmed today that this is dumb, but they're going to require masks. I, I think this is very dumb. I'm very much opposed to this. Um, they have not said if they're going to require a vaccine. I don't think they will. Um, I know HR sent something out to me and to other faculty members saying, please send us your proof that you've you know, taken the, the vaccine. And I wrote back like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I'm not taking, and, and, and in full disclosure, I'm not taking the vaccine. I'm not an anti-vaxxer by any stretch, but I'm just, I'm not taking this. I'm just, I'm, it's just not going to happen. Um, but uh, like I said, they, they apparently are requiring masks. Again, I think that's silly, but we'll see what they say as, as we move forward. All right, so the full-time program, here's what it looks like for both semesters. Um, in the fall um, is um, you know, Mondays, noon to three, Wednesdays, 10 to either four, or excuse me, 10.30 to either four or 10.30 to five. And this depends on which of these two classes you end up taking. The day program requires that you have an internship and that you have the prereqs done. Um, the, 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 Internship is required because classes operate at a faster pace, um, specifically things like embalming one, which is the theory of embalming. If you're working with in, in a prep room and you're doing embalmings, it's less hypothetical for you and it moves much, much faster. If you know what a trocar is and things like that. Um, also, we require the internship specifically for these two classes, field experience and embalming lab, because these have clinical work that have to be done for them. Um, embalming lab is exactly what it sounds like. We have a lab on campus, we go and we embalm bodies. Um, it is, we're considered a mortuary by the state of New Jersey. So you have to have that internship in place to even be in there because it'd be like taking somebody off the street and saying, oh, do you want to go see a dead body? You know, um, field experience is the other half of that. And that class is you know, what do you do as a funeral director? What do you do as an arranger? How do you run funerals? How do you make arrangements? How do you make collections? What's the FTC funeral rule? All that good stuff. Now, the way that we do that, we take the whole class and they meet from one to two. And then at two o'clock, we split them in half. And half goes to lab and half stays for field experience. And then Friday is, is, is just nine to noon. Um, the spring semester is very similar in that it's Monday, um, noon to uh, three o'clock for embalming two. And then embalming two is a 10 week course. And we'll cover all of this again at a later point. And when that ends, there's a five week course that is NBE review, which is optional. And, and I know I have last year's dates and I just didn't update it yet. Um, but uh, but that, that picks up when embalming two ends. And then the rest of the schedule is kind of similar. Now the... <clears throat> If doing the evening courses, um, like let's say you're working on some of the prereqs or you don't have the internship yet, um, in the fall, there's, there's micro that can be taken on Monday evenings and intro to funeral service that can be taken on, on Thursday evenings. In the summer, th or excuse me, uh, the spring, things get ramped up. Um, and we would put in four courses here, um, the uh, um, you know, pathology, funeral service law, embalming one, principles of funeral service, 
and then over to the summer. And by the summer, you would need to have that internship in place because there'd be counseling and then that field experience and bombing lab, both of which have that clinical work. And then you would wrap things out on in the, the fall semester of the following year. And again, I know I've last year's dates and I just didn't update it. And it's a pain to change these pictures out because I have to take like a screenshot and then fit it. And it's just a, it's just a pain. So. All right, so the funeral service handbook, everything you ever want to know about the program or too afraid to ask, this thing outlines everything about the program. We have to have this by the accreditor. Um, it outlines <clears throat> everything from our, um, you know, our, our goals and objectives to certain uh, policies that we have and all of that stuff. Most of the important stuff I'll go over tonight, but that outlines everything you could ever want to know about the funeral service program. One of the first things that I always get asked is there's three different degrees. Which degree are you um, looking to do? Um, there, and I don't think, and I think we need to change this. I don't think we do a great job of explaining this on our website. Um, every, nobody here is looking at the prep degree. The prep degree is really designed because to fulfill a need that both New Jersey and Pennsylvania have, they both say that you have to have 60 credits prior to funeral service education. They don't care what the 60 credits is in, but just so long as it exists. Um, this is designed to fulfill that. Um, what you all are looking at is the funeral service certificate, which is what everybody needs. This is what you need to get licensed in the state of New Jersey. Um, and then there's the AAS and funeral service. Now, everybody does the same classes with us. And it's just a matter of what can we pull from your academic background to, to, to you know, get you up to the AAS. And, and if you don't have a degree already, if you already have a degree, it really doesn't matter so much if you already have an associate's or a, 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 um, a, a bachelor's, it really doesn't matter in, unless you're in like Delaware. Delaware's a little wonky about that. But um, if you have the prerequisites plus a math class, a general education class, and either a degree or a um, uh, like a health class or a college success and wellness, then you would you would then also get the associate's degree. And like I said, we'll work on that in an individual basis as we we transferring classes, uh, transferring classes from other schools and whatnot. That's we'll figure out what you'll end up getting. And like I said, if you already have a degree, it really doesn't matter getting the associates. Um, if you don't have a degree, I, I think it's good to get the associates. If you ever want to move out of state, if you ever move to Delaware or Florida or New York or um, I don't know Minnesota, it, it's good to have that in in, in place to, um, because most states require an associate degree. New Jersey and Pennsylvania do not, but they require more education than most states do. So, all right. So, re New Jersey and Pennsylvania requirements. So. Um, both require those 60 college credits prior to funeral service education. Like I said, it generally doesn't matter what makes up those 60 credits, just so long as they exist. And they don't have a specific curriculum that you need to follow. Um, the Department of Education proves that this has been completed. Um, you'll have to send off your transcripts. Um, to either New Jersey or Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, they issue a pre-professional educational certificate. New Jersey issues an academic qualifying certificate, also called an MQC. They give the same thing two names, which is dumb, an AQC or an MQC. Now in New Jersey, this is especially important because they will allow you in New Jersey to finish everything else um, and, and except for the practical exam. So you could conceivably, you know, already have 60 credits or a bachelor's degree or a PhD, it doesn't matter. You come in, you do the program, <clears throat> you take the tests, you get done the program, you take the test, the national board exam, the state exam, um, then you've got all the requirements done. And then you go to take that jurisprudence or that, excuse me, that practical exam. They won't let you do it if they don't have that AQC on file for you. And this thing can take up to six months to issue. And they don't tell you when they issue it, which is especially frustrating. They don't send you anything. Um, you send your, your, your transcripts in the Department of Education. They send something over to the state board. They don't send anything to you. And I've had this happen to students where they just put it on the back burner. They forget about it. They get busy, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to take the practical exam. The last thing you need to get licensed. And they're stuck sitting for months waiting for this to get processed. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. And I'll show you where to look for this at a later point. Um, 
And again, this is your responsibility, completely independent of us. We're not allowed to release your information. We can't take your transcripts and send them out. Your educational, your specific educational information is held in the same way that medical records are. There's something called FERPA, um, which is very similar to HIPAA regulations. Um, we're not allowed to release anything about you. Like it's, it's, we're not allowed to do it. You, this is something you have to request and, and have sent out. <clears throat> All right, so the prerequisites and everybody should check to make sure that you have all of these. I've been through, I just got an email actually when we were talking from a student that thought that um, they had human anatomy from a different thing and they didn't because the bio department wouldn't accept. It's just one of those to make sure that you have these. English one and two, psychology, business law, accounting, <clears throat> chemistry, and then human anatomy, which is a Mercer class or anatomy and physiology one and two. Um, we try and keep track of it all and reach out and go, hey, you, you might be having an issue with this one class or you might there, there might be an issue with the transfer, but we cannot consistently do this. A lot of times we'll send off a transfer request because a transcript will come into us. We write up a form, we send it off to the registrar. If they don't take one of your classes, they don't tell us. Like they don't reach out to me and go, hey, we're not gonna take this class as Bio 106. So it's months can go by and then all of a sudden you're missing a prereq when you're going into your second or your third semester where you're looking to graduate and, and make sure that these things transfer if you're bringing them in from another school. It's just like I said, there's just too many students for us to keep an eye on it. Um, last year, we tied for the second largest public institution in funeral service education in, in, in the U.S. So there's a lot of students that we're dealing with. You know, at any given time, we probably have an actively around 140 students. But you, you work that out either direction, students coming in, students that have already graduated that we're working at is easily three, 350 students. And it's just it's impossible for us to be able to, 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 to ensure that everything we, we try and put everything through the best that we can. We try to advocate on your behalf, but we can't it's impossible for us to keep track of it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So New Jersey licensing requirements, um, the educational requirements, right, 60 credits, all that good stuff, uh, what we give, um, plus the internship, um, you know, and, and then the exams. The internship by default, you set up as an intern, it is two years. And it's allowed to be done concurrently with your schooling. Um, like if you're in Pennsylvania, you, and I'll explain this in a minute, it's a little bit different. It can't be done concurrently. Um, you know, um, if you have 90 credits prior to funeral service education, right, you've completed a bachelor's or you completed three years of schooling before starting with us, then they will drop that education, or I'm sorry, excuse me, they'll drop the internship minimum down to one year instead of two years. So if you have 90 credits or more before starting funeral service education, you can conceivably be done in one year. Um, you can extend the internship up to two years if necessary. And during that internship, you have to do the 75 funerals, 75 embalmings, and 25 sets of funeral arrangements. Um, as far as testing, when you get done with us, we clear you for the national board exam. Um, we also clear you to take the jurisprudence exam. Um, whenever you wrap up, there's always a JP exam right around the corner. If you end in May, you can take it in July. If you end in August, you can take it in October. If you end in December, you can take it in February. So there's always one right behind that. Then once everything else is done, all of the stuff is done, then you can register to take the practical exam. And that's when they actually come out to the funeral home and they watch you and bomb someone. So, Pennsylvania is pretty similar. Um, educational requirements, uh, 60 credits plus what we do, um, plus the internship and exams. Now, the, the, the resident internship, this follows the schooling. Um, it's 12 months of a continuous internship following funeral service education. And during this time, you have to submit to the state 35 case histories which are everything you do on a funeral. So you meet with the family, you make the arrangements for the embalming, you oversee the service, you know, and, and you, you upload that information to the state. And they do it all online now. Um, as, while you're in school, you can register as a student or a funeral trainee. Um, so if you have a funeral home, you can register as a, a and again, they give it two names, a student slash funeral trainee. Um, this allows for you to have exposure to embalmings and funerals and arrangements and everything else. It, what's weird about this is they register you through Mercer, and I don't know why they do this. 
it makes no sense to me. Your, 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 your license will get sent to us, not your funeral director's license, but the student um, funeral trainee license will get sent to us. Um, if you call the state board and if you ask them, oh, am I allowed to embalm with this? They'll tell you no. I don't know why they do this. There, it is an awful state board. If your preceptor has any questions about this, direct them to me. I have a letter. We actually had to go through the state's uh, attorney general to get confirmation on this. And they went through, they looked at the regulation. They said, yeah, absolutely. You are allowed to embalm. That's not a problem. Like, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine to do so. Um, but if you call the state board, they'll tell you otherwise. And the state board is absolutely right. And it's not like the people that are on, it's whoever's answering the phone. Um, as far as testing, there's national board exam. Um, there's the PA jurisprudence exam. And again, we clear you for all of this when you finish the program. Um, and then the written practical exam. So in, in Pennsylvania, it's a practical exam, but it's a written practical exam. And it's just a bunch of questions about embalming. In Delaware, we're not going to worry about. There's nobody. If there's anybody in Delaware, let me know. But I don't think there's anybody in Delaware in this group. All right. So the questions. Oh boy, this comes up when you register as an intern. Please certify under penalty of perjury the following: Do you currently have a child support obligation? Have you failed to respond to a subpoena relating to either parent or child support proceeding? Are you subject to a child support related arrest warrant in accordance with NJSA? Blah 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 blah. An answer of yes to. Any of these questions oh, this, um, may result in the denial of licensure. Furthermore, any false information, false certification of the above may subject you to a penalty, including but not limited to the immediate revocation or suspension of license, of licensure or, or certification. Um, and this is true in, in all of the states, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, they all have these questions that they ask you. They go on further. This, hold on, my, the chat does not want to move for me. There it goes. I'll put it over here. I'll just put it over here. There we go. Um, have you ever been uh, summoned, uh, arrested, taken into custody, indicted, tried, charged with, admitted into pretrial intervention, or pled guilty to any violation of law, ordinance, felony, misdemeanor, or disorderly persons offense in New Jersey or any other state, DC, or any other jurisdiction? Parking or speeding violations need not be disclosed, but motor vehicle violations as driving while impaired or intoxicated must be. Have you ever been convicted of any crime or offense under any circumstances? This includes, but is not limited to a plea of guilty, non volt null no contendere, no contest, uh, no contest, uh, or a finding of guilt by a jury or uh, judge or jury. If yes, please provide a copy of the judgment of conviction and uh, the release from parole or probation. Please provide a complete explanation, et cetera, and so forth. And then do you hold a professional license anywhere else? So <clears throat> I, we mentioned this because, again, and we're not standing in judgment of anyone. We've heard some weird stories over the years, and uh, we don't want you to get halfway through the program and you don't have an internship yet so you haven't had to answer these now you you find an internship and oh you used to be a bank robber and it's not going to work out on your behalf right it's 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 we don't want to sneak this up on you if you have a blotch in your in your background in your history and it's not the end of the world it's not it's again we don't we don't judge and you don't have to tell us it's between you and the state board don't hide it from them if you snuck one past them and you might be able to um 10 years down the road, let's say your competition finds out about it. Uh, they inform the state board. They could come after you and they would absolutely strip you of your license. Um, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, that's considered fraud. It's fraud by omission if you do that. And I, I, like I said, I heard some weird stories. I had a student come down one time after class and said, like, I need to talk to anyone to talk to me in my office. I said, that's fine. And he's like, well, I used to be a teacher. I'm like, oh, this is not going in a good direction, man. This is not... This isn't good, man. And 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 he told me the story. I googled his name the second he left. Uh, but it turned, he slept with a student, and the student was a senior in high school. She was of age. Not that it makes it any better. I'm not condoning that behavior. But I was like, dude, I don't think it's going to happen for you, man. Like they came to the school and arrested him. Like oh, this is not uh, not good. He went in, and made a very impassioned plea to the state board, and they had a hearing about it. And he said, look, what am I supposed to do? I I, I screwed up and I paid my debt to society and, and what am I supposed to spend the rest of my life working in a liquor store and they sold his way and they they sided with him um you know we had another student and this was before my time at Mercer but 
um, <clears throat> he <clears throat> lied. He, he, he did not disclose that he was on the sex offenders registry list. And apparently the story was, and it was a dumb story where he went, he didn't even molest anybody or anything like that. He went shrieking somewhere. He was drunk in college and he got arrested for it. And whoever the DA was really threw the book at him and he had a register and he was embarrassed by it. So he hid it. Somebody reported him to the state. They came in, they took the files from the school even, and they just told him, no, you're never getting licensed. Like, give it up. And he just left. And that was it, man. Like, if he had, if he had been forthright and just said, like, look, yeah, I got popped in college. I got drunk when I was a sophomore or senior, whatever, right? Ran through a backyard naked. Like, they would have said, fine, whatever. But he hit it. So if, if there is something, and again, nobody's perfect. We get it. I had a student come in a couple of years ago. This one really shocked me. And she's like, yeah, it might be. An, and I would have never guessed this. Uh, she, such a nice person, such a nice lady. She's like, yeah, I was involved in a double homicide. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Like, you know, and, and she ended up getting out of the industry just because she didn't like where she was working and she wanted to switch careers. I, I was going to write a letter on her behalf. She was, and I looked up the situation. Somebody asked her to leave a door unlocked and she did. And it was some drug deal gone bad. And like, you know, it's like, she wasn't sitting there with a gun in her hand offing people, but it's just the way that it got, you know, so you, you just never know. So we don't want to sneak that up on anyone. All right. So grades. All right. So grades must be a C or above in all funeral service classes and all prerequisites. Um, our grades and the funeral program are, are 75 plus is a C because that's what it takes to pass the national. So that's what we make our minimum grade. If you have to repeat courses, you can do so. One, and again, I hope this doesn't affect anybody. I hope this is just, you don't even need to worry about this. If you have to repeat a course, well, repeat a course once, not a problem. If you have to repeat a course more than once, you have to get permission of the dean. You have to get departmental permission and, and, we have a new dean, an interim dean. I'm hoping she'll stay as a dean. I really like her. But we used to have, um, when Dr. Maddox was there, he was tough, man. He was the son of a funeral director. So he took it real seriously, man. Um, and again, I hope this doesn't impact anybody. I hope you guys don't do any of this stuff. But incomplete grades. In, in, in field experience and in bombing lab, the two classes that have clinical work. If you are done the class, you've done all the academic work, but you have not completed the clinical work, meaning the embalming. So we, we require so many embalming, so many embalming observations, so many sets of funeral arrangements, that type of thing. Um, if you're done the class and you haven't completed the clinical work, then you don't mind the screaming in the backyard, in back background, nobody's getting murdered, just my three-year-old is quite rambunctious. Um, anyway, so you're not doing the embalming observation or whatever. You just get an incomplete. And then incomplete is good for a full semester. So let's say you take in fall, you take embalming lab and you don't have the embalming observation done by December. Okay, fine. We'll give you an incomplete. That's good through May. Now, if we hit May and you're not done it, that'll flip to an F and we can't switch it back. But we give you an extra 16 weeks to get, to get, get that clinical work done. Um, tests are really no makeup exams. If you just blow a test off, I'm not going to personally, again, I'm not going to keep this going. Yeah, fine, whatever. I, I had this happen to me a, a, a couple of years ago where a student failed a, a class over it. Now, we're not monsters. If there's an issue and if it's beforehand, I'm normally amenable to it. And I, if, it's a, if it's an emergency, that's fine too. I had a student that reached out to me and she was concerned and, and, and it was after the fact, she had to take her daughter to the, to the ER over a health scare. And I was like, it's fine. That's fine. You know what I mean? But if you just, eh, I didn't feel like taking the test, like, no, we're not going to give it to you. Um, <clears throat> tests in class are not given for student retention, um, but we review them in class. The feeling is I don't want a funeral service is such a small industry. Everybody knows everybody else. I don't want to have to rewrite tests every semester. And I don't want some funeral home to have a stack of our tests out there that, oh, okay, I don't need to study against take these tests, you know, and, and, and I'll know the questions ahead of time. Um, program completion. Due to the evolving nature of funeral service education, the our accreditor, the American Board of Funeral Service Education, gives one and a half times to complete the program, meaning they give you three years to complete the program um, when you work out the numbers on it. <clears throat> now, if for some reason you leave the program and this has happened where we have life, students, life gets in the way. Yeah, they, um, 
they get married, they move, they have a kid, whatever, and they step away from the program, that's fine. But if it's been more than three years and you return, you have to start back from the beginning. Classes are only good for three years. So and, and I had a student not too long ago that popped up and, and she had been out of 10 years and she only had two classes left. And she had to start back from the beginning and I've got no control over this. This goes back to the accreditor. The accreditor lays it directly on the standard and says, look, you got to go back to the beginning. And it's, it is, I felt bad. I wish I could just push her through, but I can't, I can't. It's, we have to go through reaccreditation. They look for all this stuff and I can't chance the accreditation of the program. Um, <clears throat> and be prep. Uh, FUN 299, this is recommended, but it is not yet required. There's a capstone course, there's a one credit course at the end of the program where we help prep you for the national board exam. Like I said, it's not required, but I highly recommend you take it. It's something that um, just helps you get in that mindset to get through that exam. And we want everyone to pass that exam on the first time through. So a couple of things we're going to be asking you guys for, and we'll handle this in class. Um, I used to hand these things out and we would go over them in orientation, but we'll just handle these in class. Um, we need to know if you've gotten the hepatitis B vaccination. Now, I don't care if you've gotten the hep B vaccination or not, but we need to know that you know that it exists. The federal government says that if you get hired at a funeral home within 10 days, they need to make this available to you, at least start the process. It's a three shot process. You take one shot, you wait, I think maybe six months, you take another, and then you wait, I think you wait another two months, you take the third. Um, they had to make it available to you at no cost to you. Um, a lot of funeral homes I've seen over the years don't offer this and they're not, at least the vast majority I've seen have not been, this is not malicious intent on their part. Um, it, it's just, they forget like, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I was trying to forget all about that. Like even when I worked, when I went to the program, I was working for an SAI funeral home. SCI does everything by the book. And they mentioned this in school. And I went and I asked my boss, he was like, oh, damn, I forgot all about that. Like, it's been so long since we hired anyone. Like they just didn't think of it. Like they didn't care, but it, you know, so, we, so we'll hand this out in class and we'll, we'll, we'll go over it. We just, again, need to know that, you know, that it exists. All right, so registering with the state board. Again, this has to be done to be in the day classes. Like I said, for various reasons I mentioned earlier, it's especially needed for field experience in bombing lab. So it had to be registered as an intern uh, in New Jersey or a student slash student trainee in PA to enter the lab to even be in the building. Um, again, both of those classes require so many embalmings, funerals, and embalming observations um, be completed at the funeral home. Um, if you're in New Jersey, New Jersey requires those 75 embalming, 75 funerals, um, and 25 sets of funeral arrangements. The funerals and embalmings and arrangements that you use for Mercer can be used for the state as well. They don't have to be mutually exclusive, meaning you do a body, or you do an embalming, you write up a form for, um, for Mercer. For if you're an embalming lab, let's say, you can still count that towards your 75. They can be used for both. That's perfectly fine. All right, so that AQC or that pre-professional educational certificate, if you're in New Jersey, it's the AQC. And here's what's weird. And this is why we always point it out. I don't know why they do that, but in New Jersey, they, they do this and they do it in PA as well. They, they, they verify this online through a teacher certification information system. So you have to go and register and create an ID as if you're a teacher and you're doing a teacher certification. I don't know why they do this. It's so wonky. You fill it out, you pay them 35 bucks, you have to print up a form, and then you have to get original copies of your transcript and you have to mail them off to the Department of Education. Like I said, you don't receive anything on this. So it's not a bad idea four or five months after you do it to contact Cindy at the state board and ask her if they've received it to make sure it is in their hands. Um, it's a pain, but it's just, we don't want you to get to the end and not have this thing done. And then you're stuck sitting for months. So Pennsylvania is much the same. The TIMS program, um, you, you have to register with this, you log into it, and, and it's the same thing with those educational requirements.
All right, so other requirements, and we'll talk about this in these two classes in lab and field experience. Um, there'll be a yellow application form that we need and hopefully it'll be in class. I can physically hand it to you. There's a hep, that hep B survey. Um, an intern card, we normally would ask, and this is in all the paperwork, we ask for a copy of the intern card. Really not the case anymore, especially after the last year and a half. We just get it all off of the website, the state's website. Um, and then there's an inspection report. And I'm gonna go through these things very quickly. All right, so this will normally be printed on a yellow form. We color code everything. It just makes it easier when we're going through 30, 40, 50 files to just have everything color coordinated. And, and if you're in lab or field experience, we'll need you to take this back to the funeral home and have the, you fill out part of it and the funeral director, your, your preceptor fill out part of it. This is an agreement between the funeral home and the school to allow you to do clinical work at the funeral home and for us to, to come out and to do the embalming observation and, and for the two groups to work together <clears throat> so that we can essentially evaluate you for these classes. All right, this is the inspection report. It's, it's, it's a one page thing, but it's two sided. Um, I mentioned this because, and I'll go through all of this in classes while we hand it out. We ask you to mention this to your preceptors. This is a relatively new thing. It's been about seven years since they instituted it. This comes not from the state of New Jersey, not from the school, not from the program, but from the accreditor. This comes down from the ABFSC, the American Board of Funeral Service Education. And what their fear was, and the issues that they were dealing with is there were students in other parts of the country that were in generally unsafe environments, you know, and I think there was a complaint that came out of Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken, that a student was, was embalming, there wasn't proper PPE, there was like electrical wires above the embalming table because they had pulled a light system out, but there were still live wires there and they're working, they're running water, it's just very, very dangerous. This does not apply in, oh, let me go back. It just really does not apply in New Jersey or in Pennsylvania or in Delaware. We have a lot of, uh, of regulation in these states. We get inspected in these states. We really have never seen these types of, of environments in these states, but we have to appease the accreditor. So I'll go through all of this in class as well. We give this to you, we ask you to take this back and fill it out and give us a copy of it. We then schedule a time to come out and do an actual physical inspection. This physical inspection takes about five minutes. We come out, we look around, we go, everything's great. Let's call it a day. It's not a spot inspection. We're not going to show up without being, without telling them ahead of time. We'll schedule a time. It's, it's, but I've had funeral directors get real wonky on me with this. Um, and uh, I get it. They don't want to be inspected, whatever. It's fine. I, I, I know funeral directors that I'm friends with that scream at the, the inspector from the state when they come out, like, you know, but we try and make this as painless as possible. So again, we'll go through all of this, the start of those two classes. And, uh, but it's, we just want to give you a, a, a heads up on it in the meantime. <clears throat> um, this is what the HEP B survey will look like. Like I said, we'll hand this out in class. I'm, I'm, um, if we're going to physically be in class, I'm done with doing everything digitally because it's a nightmare to do. All right, scholarships. So if you, um, one of the links in that, um, in, in the um, Google Doc that I sent out to everyone is a list of scholarships. This is not an exhaustive list. There are a bunch of other scholarships out there. These are just ones we had come across recently and dropped together. Um, apply for them. There's a ton of money out there. Um, the number one complaint I get from these organizations is that they don't get enough applicants. What, even years ago, when I, and I, I went through the program 20 years ago, I was in an, yeah, 0102, so it's been 20 years. Um, there was a student in my class and in, in principals, I believe, and he was doing a, um, a paper on, I forget the organization, but he reached out to them just to get information for this paper that he was writing. And they said, yeah, by the way, we have this scholarship that nobody's applied for in like nine years or something. And he was like, really? They're like, yeah, if you want to just send in an application, he did. They sent him a check for 13 grand. And this was in 2001, you know I mean? Like, my God, like it's, 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 and I'm not saying that's, that's typical, that's atypical, but we, 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 we want to see you guys apply for these things. And if there's anything you need from us, if you need a letter, if you need something from us to, to um, help facilitate it, please let us know. We love to see you guys get these things. We love to see Mercer students get, get scholarships. 
Um, and again, there's just more lists of these. And like I said, this is not at all fully exhaustive. This is just as I get emails, I forward it on to Janine and she'll, she'll um, you know, drop it into this list. Um, but there's a bunch of other ones out there that, that are not listed on here. Yes, Luke, do you have a question? Yeah, I just want to, I mean, there's not too many people in here, but just let everyone else know. Most of the time, it's not like the most complicated form to fill out for the survey. It's pr- I mean, it's not, it's not easy work, but it's not like it takes hours and hours to fill it out. And it's worth it. Even if it's a few hundred dollars, it's, it's worth it. Just wanted to throw that out there. And that's a good point. Because a lot of times people think it's going to take them like six hours to complete. It's not. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So good point, man. Real good point. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, oh, so uh, one of the appendixes, and, and um, this is all from the um, uh, from the um, funeral service handbook. I don't know why I blanked on that. Um, <clears throat> one of the la- later pages in it is a list of the um, textbooks. So we put these out there. Um, if you want to look on Amazon or eBay or whatever, or even I've seen a lot of these textbooks advertised on in Bombers Who Care and other Facebook groups. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you can pick them up somewhere else, that's fine. You don't have to buy them from us. And if you're not sure which textbooks you need for any particular class, if you take the course number and you drop it into a search on the website, like let's say you're taking intro to funeral service, that is FUN 206. You put in FUN 206 into a search on the website and then on the college's website, it'll bring you right to a page that has the, um, the syllabus for the class. You can click open that syllabus and it'll tell you exactly what you need. So, you know, it's the information to out there. Well, certain class, certain books on here, I, I would say to, um, you know, you, you might want to get more recent, a more recent copy, like looking at embalming history, theory, and practice. That's like the Bible of embalming. Um, and so actually, let me grab my copy. I believe this clip I took is a little bit older um, from an older version of it because we're actually, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right, the, fourth, uh, the fifth edition. So um, this is what the book looks like. If you go back and you get the fourth edition, that's normally okay. Um, they changed a little bit, but it's more page numbers are changed. You know, um, I wouldn't go past that though. I wouldn't go third, I, third worst case scenario, but second, I, I definitely wouldn't get a second edition of it. It's just too far back. Um, and, and it would just create too much of an issue for you. Now, if I look at, um, history of American funeral service, history of American funeral directing, that book, my father used when he got licensed, he was licensed in 1960. This thing was originally written in 1957. And I had a student find, and not a first, but a second edition from 1959. And they, she gave it to me. And I was like, wow, really? Like, she was like, yeah, it was just at the funeral home. And it was just sitting around. So they gave it to me. Um, I went through and compared it. It's not much different from the current um, uh, version of it. So certain ones, you can go back further. If you have a question, let me know. But we give it to you just so you have that information. If you want to get the textbooks now, if you want to get them somewhere else other than the bookstore, that's fine to do. It's not a problem. The last appendix in the um, handbook is the anatomical guide to limits. Now, we give these to you because these are really difficult. Um, we're not going to give you a pop quiz day one or anything like this, but you'll get these in embalming one, embalming two, restorative art, uh, embalming lab, and a couple of other classes these pop up. These are a pain in the ass, and I wish they would drop these from the curriculum because as soon as you are licensed, you can promptly, as soon as you're through the national board exam, you can promptly forget these. Um, But we give them to you just in case you want to look at them ahead of time. What an anatomical guide is, is puts you in the area of where a vessel is. An anatomical limit gives you the top and the bottom area where you can raise that vessel. And a lateral guide the, just the LG is, allows you to draw an invisible line over top of that, that vessel. So um, like if you look at the common carotid, it's posterior to the medial border of the sternocleidomastoidus. And, 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 and that's a muscle that runs along here. It's saying that it's, it's basically underneath it and close to this side. So it puts you in that general area, the anatomical limit, the right sternoclavicular articulation, which is right here, the superior border of the thyroid cartilage is right here, it gives you the area that you can raise. And we'll go through all of this in class. Um, and then that, that linear guide, the sternoclavicular articulation to the anterior surface of the earlobe is basically just saying right in here up to the earlobe. And just as a, as a 
good indicator, a good little trick. If you're looking for the carotid, if you put your, your, your hand in that sternoclavicular articulation and you aim up towards the earlobe, that's right where you're going to find it. So, but anyway, we give it to you ahead of time. If you want to look at it, fine. If you want to wait until you're in class, that's fine as well. But we give it to you because sometimes I've had students go, look, I, I wish I had these earlier. I would have like looked them over a little bit. Um, but like I said, that, that's all in the, that, that handbook. But, oh, and these are not the current ones. Um, we have to put onto our website, and it's been difficult because we haven't been back on campus, but we have to put three-year stats onto the um, on, onto the uh, uh, the website, and it's our, our um, pass rate for the national board exam, our graduation rate, time of graduation rate, um, overall employment, employment and funeral service, things like that, and we tend to have pretty good numbers on that. The, the national board exam, uh, and you guys will hear me gripe about this over the next year or year and a half or two years, however long you're in the program, the national board exam is horrible. And they, they, they have all this really creepy metadata on, I, I wrote questions for it in 2019 and it freaked me out. The only reason I did it was just to find out more information about it, but it really freaked me out. Like I said, they've got all this metadata where they'll look at individual questions and go, well, this question is performing too high. So let's tweak the wording on it to drop it down. So if a particular question is doing well in Wyoming, let's say, and it's, 80% of people are getting it correct. They tweak it to try and get that percentage drop down to less than 70%, which is wonky stuff. Um, you know, but the, the overall pass rate for the sciences last year was 62%. And we tend to exceed it every year. Um, we, we tend to, to hit somewhere with the, the sciences, somewhere in the low 70s to high 70s and the arts somewhere in the, some, somewhere normally in the 80s. Um, you know, it, it's, there are years you, 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 you hit a, a bump and it drops down in the seventies, but most times we're somewhere in that ballpark. So we exceed the national, le national numbers every year. But like I said, it's something we have to disclose. So feel free to go to our website and take a look at that and see what the, the numbers are on that. Actually, we did pretty good last year. I was really surprised about that with everything being locked down last year, but we did pretty damn good last year. So, um, <clears throat> I think that's the last one in the, yep, there we go. So questions about any of that stuff I just threw at you guys? All right, so if you haven't been registered for classes yet, just shoot me an email. Normally, like I said, what we would do is I would just hand out forms right in the orientation. We'd just write them down and, 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 and register you. Um, shoot me an email. And um, if, you, if you've emailed me in like the last two weeks, I've been way behind on all of it. And, and later tonight and tomorrow, I'm going to try and get caught up on all of that. As of Saturday to Saturday, I'm out of town on, on vacation. Like I said, that's why I have all these snacks behind me. Um, and uh, But Janine will be around. And, and Janine Rosenberger, um, she can handle most of the stuff in my um in my absence um <clears throat> somebody's just asking if funeral director license needed to do pet funerals not in new jersey or pennsylvania at least not yet i mean there is a whole burgeoning uh you know industry happening there um in florida they said the average person spends more on a on a pet's cremation than they do on a family member's cremation so we'll see where that goes in the future um, but, uh, but yeah, so like I said, if you haven't been registered yet, um, you know, Luke, do you have a question? Yeah. And as soon as I raised my hand, you were about to, to touch on it. So if I haven't been registered yet, I don't want to say, I mean, I want to get it situated as soon as possible, but obviously if you're going to be away for a week, I don't want to push it till, you know, a week before classes start. So I'm just wondering how, do you send me a form and I fill it out and send it back to you or how... Luke, you, you've got all the prereqs done, right? And you're, you're, yeah, you're looking to do got my associates, yes. Luke, full time. Then, then just do me a favor. Shoot me an email. Copy Janine on it. I mean, send it tonight or tomorrow and just say, you've got my approval. Um, you know, put all you right. into the full time. And I know you're registered, so we'll put you into lab for that first semester, okay? Great. Thank you. And what is Janine's email? Do you, if you know, sorry. It, it's, here, I'll put it into the um, All right, sounds good. And so I'm sorry, I hate, hate to be there. So I'm not registered technically yet, right? I'm not registered. I don't know off the top of my head. If we've registered you previously, I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. So like, I would assume I'd get some kind of confirmation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and something me and my mom were wondering, once I am registered, will I be able to just sign into my Mercer and start making payments automatically? As it, yeah, as yeah. As and what I would suggest doing is going in and making a payment. Oh, I just did that direct. I'm sorry. Let me, hold on a second. Uh, 
Um, what I would suggest doing is um, going in and making the minimum payment and then setting up the um, chargeback. Um, the uh, the chargeback, and, and for anybody who's not familiar with it, they have to give you the in-county rates for everything that you take. Um, even if it's a prerequisite course, um, they have to give you the in-county rates for it, if you're in New Jersey at least. Um, they make you file some paperwork, but if you go to the school's website, you just put in chargeback, it'll bring it up for you. So if you make the minimum payment, it'll keep you in the class. You can then do the chargeback and then they'll drop the rates down and then you won't pay the full amount. You'll pay the in-county rate by the time you're done with the payment plan. Great. Okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying that that's great to know. And basically I just had the same question, Michael, about um, registration. Mm -hmm. um, do I just, do, uh, like, I wasn't sure where I am, if I'm okay to go ahead and start registering for the fall? Um, you can, I would just need to see did you fill out one of the blue applications, Siobhan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's weird right now because I don't know what anybody looks like. So I can't remember, like it all blurs together, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, bah, 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 bah. Take a look, I am loading this thing up. All right. Uh, yeah, you shoot me an email, let me know. Um, I think there was just one class we were talking about, um, figuring out how to- Wait to see, it. okay. And uh, so I'll, we'll just need to take a look at that and figure out exactly what you need on that one. Okay. Uh, if you shoot me an email tonight, I'll try and take a look at it tomorrow. I'm trying to wrap all this stuff up before I hit the road. And worst case scenario, if you get wrapped, if you have to get registered in the week before class, it's not a big deal. Right, it's not. We can register right. people into classes. So long as it's not a funeral service class. If you need something else, let me know. And that takes priority because we always have room in the funeral service classes. Okay, fair enough. Thanks. Sure thing. And have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions about? All right, fantastic. Then I will look to see everyone in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll get you guys all, all wrapped up. The classes uh, start the week after Labor Day. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll get you started, get you through and get you done. Every year it goes, it goes like that. It goes so fast. You'd be shocked at how fast it's just. And every year I have students say it to me. I just got started and now here we are wrapping it up. So yeah, it'll, it'll go fast. We'll get you done get your license to get you out there all right thanks thank you so much thank, thank you. you nice to meet you all <laughs> you too. enjoy your trip thank you take care everyone Bye. thank you mr daly let's see if i can close this from oh there it is